I see we've moved back from legitimate instruments like the flute to uh, hillbilly instruments. He's got a pair of spoons, folks. Are you making fun of me? A pair of spoons. The spoons are an amazing Boy, instrument. You dragged me in here you at six, 6.30 in the morning to do a podcast. I haven't had any coffee yet. You're breaking out spoons of all things. Uh, 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 I'm going to drink some coffee. No. No. All right, maybe I'll work on that. Yeah, day we're gonna again stick in the chemistry here. This podcast 4.3. We're gonna talk about redox, oxidation reduction, numbers, and balancing oxidation reduction equations. Isn't that a cool picture, Mr. Sam? It is. I love the rusty what? car. It is an old rusty car. In an oxidation reduction, of course, what we do is we're gonna talk about rust is one of the mm. things in an oxidation reduction reaction. My Here's son's a big fan car. of the Cars movie. He likes the Mater. Cars movie. Mater's a, a rusty old Mater. Tow truck. Yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about. You've never seen the Cars movie? I don't think I saw oh, that. Oh, that's great. It's a little I, Disney movie. It's I fun. bet it is. Okay, yeah. well, let's just chat in here. Oxidation reduction reactions are reactions that we've not talked much mm -hmm. about. Um, in fact, I don't know if we've ever talked about I don't think that. we talked about them in, in general chemistry. No, no, we didn't. But now we're going to. Now, oxidation reduction reactions are reactions that involve um, something called oxidation numbers. So mm. before we can really talk about what an oxidation reduction reaction is, we have to understand how to do the oxidation numbers rules. Every element in a compound, and actually in a, even an element in, an, in, a, in its pure form, has a oxidation number. And there is a set of rules whereby you... Um, assign an oxidation number mm -hmm. to a particular number. And these are the rules. Yep. Oxidation states, if you have a pure atom, um, it has an oxidation state of zero, like a zero charge. It's kind of like charge, but not exactly the sure same. Kind of. yeah, ions keep their charges, so if you have sodium or whatever, because it has a normally has a positive charge, then well, you leave it with a positive charge. Duh. Oxygen, typically, in a compound, has a charge of negative two, unless it's uh, peroxide. Very rare. And that's negative one. Very rare, yes. Fluorine is always negative one, unless, of course, you have F2, and F2 is the elemental, and that would have a charge of zero. Hydrogen is plus one. It, in, in case of uh, very, very few exceptions, when you have the hydride, I don't know that we even talk much about no. hydride, and that's not a big deal. You're not going to encounter them in our class. And um, the sum of oxidation states for a char uh, equals the charge of the substance. If it is a compound, then it's zero. So we're just going to do a, a number of example yep. problems. Those here. rules are all in your handouts. If you're out there in internet land, and you don't have our handouts. Just hit pause, write them down. Copy them. them down. Yep. So let's do a couple of examples and see if we can make mm -hmm. this work. Um, so I am going to choose the compound sulfur trioxide. Okay. All right. We want to assign oxidation numbers to each element in sulfur trioxide. So yes. Mr. Sams, what are we going to do? Well, here? oxygen is always minus two. Yeah. So O is minus two. So O is charge. It's actually it's oxidation numbers mm -hmm. minus two. And then the sulfur, we have to just sort of add them up. It's yep. just mathematics. So, so it's going to be negative six. Because we have three oxygens. Yep. So and this is a compound, so compounds add up to zero. There's no so charge. So what must be the charge of the sulfur? It have to be positive six. So yeah, it's like I like things x minus six equals zero, and I, this is not hard. Mm -mm. So the s has an oxidation number of plus six. Now let me talk about this for just a moment. Um, uh, the reason you when you write O negative two, that actually indicates its oxidation number. If I say O2 negative, what that means is it means that the uh, this is actually the charge. A R G E. So the charge is uh, you'll say two minus or three positive or whatever, and the oxidation number is plus something. So it's a minor point, but not too terrible. Can you think of another one we ought to do? Uh, let's do something with nitrogen in it. How oh, about okay. um, NO2? No, let's not do that. Let's do nitric acid, oh, yeah. HNO3. Nitric acid, HNO3. So nitric acid. Now, what's the story on hydrogen? Hydrogen is always plus one, unless it's a hydride, which that's not. And then the nitrogen is the tricky one. Oxygen is always that negative. So I'll say plus X. Plus, and O is, of course, the negative two. And there's three of them, so that'll be negative six. And this is a compound, so it adds up to zero. So one plus x. And minus it's going to have to be a positive five. So x is positive five. So you would say h positive one in positive five. So there's always sort of one that's kind of hard to figure out. And the rest? Yep. Well, the rest. So the out. ones that you know that are always something or usually something, do those first. And then things that can have multiple oxidation states. Nitrogen's weird. Sulfur's weird. Uh, manganese. A lot of those transition metals can have multiple oxidation states. So you do those last. Okay, let's do one that has a charge. How about um, perchlorate? ClO4 negative 1. All right, now this one's a little bit weird because we know the charge. 
is negative one. Actually, mm -hmm. what should I actually say instead of what negative one? Should say one minus. I should probably say one minus because that is the charge. So, which is the one that's known? Uh, well, we're going to know oxygen, which is minus two, and there's four of them, so that's a total of minus eight. So x minus eight equals one. Negative though? one. This one is a little tricky. Instead of saying it equals zero, it equals negative one because it equals the charge. That's the rule. So of course x has to be uh, plus seven. X yeah. is positive seven. Making me do math before seven. I know. This isn't a very mathematical lesson. CL plus <sighs> seven. seven O negative two. two. Now, to make a note here, chlorine doesn't really have a charge of positive seven. It has an oxidation number of positive right. seven. You probably memorized that chloride has a charge of negative one, and that's correct. So I, I, you're going to do lots of examples in book problems, so I think that uh, suffices. Mm -hmm. Let's define some terms here. Now, in an oxidation reduction reaction, something is oxidized mm -hmm. and something is reduced. Now, the best way to remember that is um, there's this saying about this lion. And the mm -hmm. lion's name is Leo. Leo. And you say Leo. Uh, says no, I also learned oil rig, which is another one. It means lose electrons. Oxidation. It's hard to write it down like this. <laughs> <laughs> And then gain electrons and reduction. And I learned oil rig, and it, that's just oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. But it doesn't refer to electrons, so if you forget what that is, Leo says Gary helps you a little more. Now, another thing I like to think about when I think about the definition of oxidation, actually, let's go back to this screen. Oxidation, of course, is where a substance um, uh, gains. Right, Gains other. charge. L oh, so uh, it's losing electrons. Lose electrons. And this is gain electrons. But I also like to think of this, uh, oxidation and what's happening kind of, if you think about it, it's going to gain um, a charge. Actually, it's going to uh, gain an oxidation number, but they're very similar, so it's easier to think of a charge. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the reduction loses charge. And I like to think of the fact that definitionally, that when you lose a charge, it's reduced. That yes. just kind of makes sense. Yeah, you get more negative is yeah. what you end up doing. So that's how I think of it as being reduced. You get more negative. Then we have these odd things called oxidizing agents and yeah. reducing agents. What's up with that, Mr. Sam? Well, oxidizing agent, that's the thing that gets reduced. No, that's right. It gets reduced. Huh? You're thinking, why did... Well, the thing, if it gets reduced, that means it did the oxidizing. Because yeah. it went out and it said, okay, your charge is going to go up. And by doing that, its charge had to go down and got reduced. So the thing that's reduced is called the oxidizing agent? That's correct. So that must mean that the reducing agent is the thing that... Gets oxidized. Gets oxidized, okay. Yes. So if it gets oxidized, it does the reducing. So it's kind of a weird thing. To it is. And you so just gotta... Just gonna have to just sort of just gotta know it, yep. All right, let's take a look at this example. Yeah, that um, should not have the SO2 at the yeah, end. Yeah, it doesn't on your paper, so um, we just have... We had a mistake on our PowerPoint here. Okay, here's what we need to do. We need to assign oxidation numbers to everything, every element in this particular mm -hmm. chemical reaction. So here we have lead. Now, what is the elemental charge on lead? Now, looking at the periodic table, it looks to me like it's plus four. Well, that's just a pure element right there. There, there is no charge on it, oh. so pure elements always have an oxidation yes. state of Don't forget, zero. Forget, that's perfect, that lead has a charge of zero when it's an element. And oxygen, I usually think of oxygen, we just learned as negative two. Oh, right? Yeah, but right there, it's in its elemental form, too. It's not in a compound, so again, zero. zero. All right, now when we look at it in a compound, ladies and gentlemen, what we need to do, of course, here the oxygen does have that charge of minus 2. Yep. And then the lead, of course, to balance it out, it's just PBO, it'll, it'll be, be plus, plus two. 2. Now let's take a look. The lead is going from, the lead is going from 0 to positive 2. Yeah. So that's going up in charge. Yes. 0 to positive 2 is so up. So that is? That got oxidized. So this is oxidized. Which makes lead, strangely enough, the reducing agent. Because so it got oxidized, it's the reducing agent. So it's the reducing agent, okay? Now, we'll look at this, but I, I, yeah, you'll see this. O goes from zero down to negative two. So if he's reducing down, yep. he's therefore being he reduced. He got reduced, making him the oxidizing agent. Now, I want you to um, understand, ladies and gents, that um, something I was going to say, and I just lost it. It's early in the morning. Um, it'll probably come to me as we do example. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is a very interesting problem. Oh, I yeah. like this particular problem. So let's assign oxidation numbers. Here's the chlorine. I think I've learned this now. It's an element. So yes. its charge is zero. Yep. The 
oxygen and hydroxide is minus two. Minus two. The hydrogen plus is one. plus one. Actually, I do remember what I was about to say. Something you understand, guys, is that in an oxidation reduction reaction, only one thing can be oxidized and only one thing can be reduced. Correct. Something goes up and something goes down. Right. You can't have two ups, two downs. Nope. You can't have two ups and a down. It's only one up. One up. One down. Reason being, guys, the whole deal behind oxidation and reduction reactions is electrons are being transferred from one thing, one element to another element. And they're only going from one thing to another. So it's a transfer. Perfect. Yep. All right. Let's do the, this chloride because this is easy. That's nice and easy. Negative That's one. Minus one because it says and minus one. Hydrogen here is positive plus one. one. And the O is negative two. Minus two. My O's have not changed. Mm -mm. My H's at least yet. Now, what's going to be the O and the CLO negative? O is going to be minus 2. Minus 2. And then when you do the math? They have to add up to X minus 1. Minus 2 equals negative 1. So X is? Plus 1. Plus 1. Now, we have to look for elements that are changing. Yeah, it looks like the now chlorine went from 0 to plus 1. Okay, so if you have chlorine going from 0 to plus 1, it is being? Oxidized. Going up. So the chlorine is being oxidized. Now, uh, wait now a minute. I need to find something to go down. So now the oxygen is going from negative 2. Two. Yeah, so that's not a change. That, that okay. didn't change. It must no, be the hydrogen. no, the no. hydrogen is going from positive no. one to positive. No, I thought no. you just said that something must go up and something. It must does, go down. Mr. Berger. Look at the chlorine again. It went from zero to minus one. In addition to, f to going from zero to plus one. Oh, okay. So guys, what's going on here is the chlorine is also being reduced. This is a situation where one chemical is both being oxidized and being reduced. Mm -hmm. This does happen. In fact, it gets a special scientific yeah. sounding word. Disportionation. Or something like that. Is that right? I think it's pronounced disportionation, Mr. Sams. Portionation? I don't know, I don't know either. It's, it's, it's just big and obnoxious. I've and spelled it right. Man, these are boogers. Yeah, I know. When you get to predicting products, I always mess these up for some reason. So when you're when you're struggling through them, just know that Mr. Sam's always messes them up, and it usually takes him about four or five tries to actually get it right. 